I'm here with Marvin Moore Sr. Marvin, what was that story you started to tell me? Well, the property where Dave formed on the right hand side before you get to Thomas Bridge. Right, right across from Corson's, that piece where Corson lived? No. Further down near the creek, near Tom's Bridge? The, the last one, the last field never had a house on it in my time. Yeah. And there never was a house on the other property in my time but that I know of. Yeah. But it couldn't have burnt down the Chu family, Nur Chu. Yeah. Nur Chu had a house, he built it there. The best of my knowledge, they told me. Yeah. And of course, he was an old man then. And uh, that house burnt down sometime, maybe it might have been late 1938 or early 39. Uh -huh. Because all the uh, the wood that didn't burn up. Yeah. Where they put the Fort Norris Fire Company, that's the only fire company we had them days. Yeah. And uh, they put the fire out. I mean, of course, that part's been handed to me, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh, when I moved to Draxton, the first part of August, I think maybe about the 3rd of August, we moved to Draxton. We got totally moved about the 3rd. That frame and everything of that old house, where it burned up, was still there on top of all the charred yeah. timbers and stuff. Yeah. And then if you come back this way to where that road, oh, that house, you know the road that went all the way through the Strawberry Avenue? Yeah. That house was on the left hand side if you turn from Lewis Road across. Yeah. And another house was on this side. I don't know when that house went, but both foundations were still there. Uh huh. And I, I don't even know who had that house. I've never heard nobody say. Uh-huh. And yeah, on the other road, when you got over on Draxter Road, yeah. or, uh, James Moore Road now, yeah. uh, that was Oscar Tyson's place. Uh-huh. I picked strawberries for Charlie Chew, that was Nur Chew's son. Yeah. There for three cents a quart. Really? And never got a nickel. No? They told him to walk and pay us off for strawberries. Huh. Said what we picked, we could have take home. My mother candle. Huh. Yeah. Well, tell me, um, what did your grandfather and and Corson Lord do? Uh, your grandfather Clem Lord, uh, Moore. What did he uh, and Corson do together? Well, I, I can't remember too much to take my grandfather done with him, except. They was friends. Yeah. And they spent a lot of time over there from time to time. Yeah. And uh, when the grist mill was up there, wherever it was, I guess right where the Thomas Bridge is, right? Well, no, up past there, across where? from that cranberry French, bog. Frenchville. Yeah. Okay. It, it was French because it was a fellow that married a, a lore woman that inherited it. Oh, okay. And my Uncle Dave told me where his father pointed out, and I. I found the foundation in there. Oh, yeah. The raceway used to cross, not where it does now, yeah. but up at the other corner of the pond. Yeah, yeah. So I found it. Yeah, well, when I remember uh, Tommy Blizzard, yeah, he died at about 65, and I say he died probably in the, around 57. Him and his mother lived there alone. He was a, kind of a dirty type guy. He never uh, took too many baths or nothing. Where did he live? Up there near the old mill? Just when you went past the old mill, around the curve, right there. Yeah. Now there was also a house on the corner of Lord's Road. Yeah. Right in there. That was still standing when I can remember. Now there was a barn on the opposite side of the road where that big field is. Yeah. That was even there, oh guy, I'm going to say sometime during World War II. I don't even remember when it got tore down or nothing. But. Well, I don't remember anything in my time on any of those corners, but I looked at an old map uh -huh. back in the 1800s, and there was a house on every corner there. That's right. Now, I, I never seen no house on the road that goes into to, uh, Wayhead's plant. Yeah. Uh, what is it called? Uniman now. Yeah. I never remember no house being there. 
Yeah. But this house over here, years and years and years after the house was gone, that house stood there for a good while on Roar's Corner. Uh -huh. that, I call it Roar's Corner for that road going to Thomas Bridge. Yeah. And uh, there was a Bartlett pear tree there. And when I was a kid, I used to go up there every year and get about a basket of Bartlett pears, and my mother would fix them up first for dessert, you know. Yeah, right. And she canned a lot of them, too. Yeah. But it used to have some... It had to be a normal old tree back then. Yeah. But it was loaded with beautiful pears. Yeah. You know, I probably told you, maybe I haven't. Uh, I don't know whether you'd be interested in knowing this or not, but if you went through Wayhead's Road, uh, Unimus Road now. Yeah. When I was a kid, they called the line the ditch where the bridge is. Yeah. And when it went up, it went past the the uh, club now and made her left and that was a township line yeah but in the meantime they've changed the township line and uh, made it so it's that side of the of the crossing really huh yeah and uh, something I want to tell you but maybe you'd like to hear it or not I don't know but sure uh, when you went up that road before there was any sand plant yeah. They was, uh, I think 1939 or 40, they started building Whitehead's plant. Yeah. I remember Pop going out there because he worked for South Jersey Sand. Uh huh. And when I was a kid, about, my dad bought me a bicycle for a dollar. Yeah. Off the Italian family was leaving Patucci Farms. Yeah, right. Been picking on the farm all summer. Right. And I seen him about 10 years ago. Yeah. Henry's name was. Yeah. He had a shoe place going into Hamilton. Yeah. That same kid I bought the bicycle. For. Really? <laughs> and he was just about my age. Yeah. But he's dead and gone now. But anyhow, when you went up that road, the hobos used to stay right where the railway crossed the railroad track. Yeah. There was always beer cans and all kinds of cans laying there and yeah and pop always give me the dickens for going up that road so me and herbie morgan and harris mintz he had built a trailer to go on back of his bicycle yeah out of the two big wheels and we put the tent on there and we went camping up over the railroad track towards snow hill you know where snow hill yeah was, right of course it's going now they've done pumped it but yeah coming out of the hill on the north side, there was a stream of water this big, that's what fed that ditch. Yeah. And that's where we camped and we cooked with that water. We stayed there one of the holiday weekends, I don't know. Yeah. And then we was up there four or five times after that. Yeah. <laughs> but we was even up there after Wayheads built the plant. And when you went to Whipco, you've probably been in there, I expect. Oh, years ago, yeah. Well, you went across the railroad track. Yeah. And the road was on the right hand side of the railroad track. Now they go up through the plant. Uh -huh. But the road's still over there. Yeah. That road's still there. But when you went over there, of course there's a pond down now and that's been pumped out. But there was a fork. That fork went off to that where we camped at. Yeah. And that went right on up and went to the Akeley Road. Yeah. Went clear on through the Akeley Road, it did. Well, my, when I came down as a little boy with my grandfather, they referred to that as Narrow Lane Road. Right. Yeah. You got some nice looking tomatoes there. Yes, I have. Yeah, I planted these in 25th. Really? And we had that real freeze that night before. Yeah. These are them uh, thick reds. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, these is picked ribs. Yeah. The other was, was uh, uh, made by Harris. Did you it's, lose some of them uh, in that freeze? No. No? And in the tans, he lives up the road, got a little market right there above me. Yeah. He said, you're nuts. My tomato plants was this big in the hot house. Yeah. I invited him to raise them for me. Yeah. And I said, well, the man said, I got to get them out of there. They're, they're ready. I said, well, I have $100 in the plants. So if I lose them, I lose them. I had a couple nights that I thought I was going to lose them. 
but they they made it. Good. They've done real good. You'll see them back right there from, from the field, right there on the wrong side. I got yeah. them little short sticks. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing real good, really. Well, but thanks. They, there's a secret with these. Thanks for sharing these stories with me.